Well, after that seriously interesting sponsors break, Paul, we're going to head back to the Green Gully Reserve. Today, the home of St Albans for the Saints Cavs clash. 1 0, Green Gully lead it at half time. Which way will it swing? Let's go out and see the second half right now, Paul. Another throw taken by Rados. Number of games is already postponed in this week's round of matches. Nine v ten. Awkward ball sense in there. That's Takes good, it on the chest. Good take too. Under some pressure there from Zelko Gajula. Glosky down the line. Good ball too. Supporting run. Good cross indeed. Oh. He has dropped it. It's in the mud. It's in the goal. And Darren Scoble, who has not had the most auspicious game today, steps up to stab home a left footer and give Green Gully a two-goal advantage. The right spot at the right time for Darren Scoble. And he knocks it home to make it Green Gully 2 St Albans nil and Sean Keogh well you've got to blame the conditions to some degree but Sean Keogh couldn't take it cleanly even with, he's even looking at the palms of his gloves now because he took it he had it in his hands Gula busy at both ends of the park knocked in by Pondliak headed away by Ketsikidis and Charlie Sant the easy take on the chest Oh, that's a nasty tackle. Behind play, should have been a free kick. The calls coming from the gully players. Tommy Markowski, the referee, let's play go on. Almost a green gully's advantage, slipping and sliding everywhere. Gee, that was rugged stuff from Genovese. It's starting to happen now. They're not holding back. Tom Markowski letting it go on. Push and shove off the ball. Saints turn it away. Ilya Radosh, he goes to ground. They're rolling everywhere in the mud. They're getting pushed to ground. And Tommy Markovsky says, keep it happening, fellas. Nacheski offside. Oh, Jingos, I tell you what, he was fairly liberal. There's a yellow card going out now to whom? Is it straight into the post? Good anticipation by Cameron Brown. He'll lose the run of it. Tries to earn it back, bodies his way to the ball, but again the pass is a poor one. Radosh to the substitute. Karishinen inside. Jolic, Jolic straight up the middle. Turned over easily by Ketsakidis. Offside, only just against McGlofsky. Saints will get it back and, well, the rain's cleared. The game again becoming the most uh, exciting affair. Pondriac, no support. Here's the chance for Pondelyak through. Good stop by the goalkeeper. Second chance for the substitute. Cross the goal and pu pushed in by Mick Kalina on the line. And Saints strike back. And that was more good luck than good management, Paul. The yeah, fortunate goal, but one that they needed. And now the Saints have a lifeline.
Modell, awkward. Did well under pressure, and there was some pressure there. Oof. And that is a late challenge. Darren Scoble went up as if he'd been hit by a by land Grigula. rover. And Waddell's asking Jim Markowski to do something. Gajula's called. It has become a little bit uh, willing. He really did. He went right up in the air then. Sent him spinning. What will Jim Markowski do? He's talking to him. He's got to produce a card. And he does. It's a yellow. Perhaps some fortune there for Gajula. He's actually going to knock this corner into the breeze. Which is now... What's left of it blowing across the ground away from the social club or the broadcast side? Second bite at the cherry. Green Gully with men forward. Oglowski's there. Genovese's there. Nasevsky perfectly positioned on the centre. About 30 yards out. Nasevsky. Got past his man well. Still Tony Nasevsky. Good chances for Gully. Went on his own from an impossible angle. And he did actually get the angle, Paul. But just couldn't keep the shot down. But he spotted it perfectly. And perhaps an Aussie rules parlance, he got it between the sticks. Free kick. Got to be a free kick. On Milahovic. Taken quickly. Good ball too. Good opportunity here. Magalovsky, chance to cross. Deep cross. Keo's out. He's oh, grabbed that's it. A good take. That was almost similar to the second green gully goal. He's just got the fingertips to it, but that time it stuck. Paul! It stuck. He's had a couple this afternoon that he wished would stuck, especially <laughs> that shot in the first 30 seconds. And chance there. Oh, yeah, the game is still going on. But, uh, my gosh, nothing's happened. St Albans ball on the half line. Through two tackles was Pondelyak. Macheski got it away at the third. Good touch under pressure. Oh, brought to ground was Genovese. Play goes on offside. Now, that's a difficult one because the referee... Jim Markowski playing the advantage after the foul on Daniel Genovese. But of course the advantage was nullified by that offside. And uh, Genovese is still not looking particularly well. As he drags himself. And in fact trots off the ground for treatment so the cab's down to 10 men saints one cabs two turnover in midfields gully's got the numbers what a waste by uh, cameron brown Julia Basic have not seen a lot of him in the second half. From a distance, knocks it high, across the face of goal, eludes everyone. The final touch from Karishnan pushed off the line. Saints will get another chance. Waddell away in desperation and another defensive free kick called. All right, Chris Taylor, well done. Three points. Now you're on 29 points and you've really pulled out of that relegation zone. Yeah, well, um, pending the result of the tribunal Wednesday, we m might get another three from Preston last week. Um, and that could put us in the hunt for the top five. So, you know, the people that wrote us off early on, you know, might have to eat the words in the end. So there you have it. 2-1 the final score at Green Gully Reserve. Second half goals to Darren Scoble and Mick Kalina. And a first half one to Daniel Genovese separating the two teams. And uh, St Albans really getting caught out early on in both halves with both uh, Green Gully's goals coming in the first five minutes. Outstanding player of the day, without a doubt, Tony Nasevsky, the midfield maestro for Green Gully. He really uh, called the shots for Green Gully there and too good for St Albans on the day. And Blakey, you have to pay credit to not only Tony Nasevsky, but the supporters of both sides who came out on a freezing cold winter afternoon to, to watch the match. Mate, you would have to, wouldn't you? Because it was an appalling day in the game, let's face it. 
I've got to speak the truth. It was dreadful, and uh, I mean, you could put a, a lot of it down to the conditions. The ground was a bit chopped up. Mm. There was rain. It was very, very cold. But if you're going to give votes, yeah, you give three votes to the punters that turned up at the Green Gully Reserve yesterday, particularly to, to the two young ladies who did, it didn't matter. Torrential downpour. They stayed right down there by the fence. They yep. weren't perturbed by uh, by the day, uh, the weather conditions, or the appalling standard of the game. But uh, yeah, as you said. Uh, Tony Nachevsky was one of the shining lights on the afternoon, but the question still has to be about Green Gully, and I know you know we've broached this with Chris Taylor, the coach, mm. but you know a season of expectations for Green Gully, and it's down the tubes. So a few questions to be answered out there. Yeah, maybe not down the tubes. There's the tribunal on Wednesday for the last week's game against Preston. Green Gully may end up getting the three points from that game, and all of a sudden, and Chris Taylor certainly uh, believes this is the case. Green Gully may become a, a finals contender. It's all a bit much a bit late, I think. Uh, they'll be doing well to get there, but uh, some hope for the Green Gully supporters at least. Yes, uh, two more games to go, of course, for Green Gully. They play Werribee at Galvin Park next weekend in the, in the final home and away round. They've got Doncaster Rovers. They are winnable games. So Should be you, six out of six there. You'll never, never know if you never, okay. never go, Paul. Will you? Other games uh, there were other from games. the Premier League. A couple of postponements, of course, because of the inclement weather conditions at the weekend in Melbourne. We had uh, three matches, uh, had the pin pulled on them. Preston against Doncaster Rovers, uh, Springvale against uh, Altona Magic, and uh, the other game, of course, Bulleen against Faulkner, the traditional derby game. And that one is set down now, folks, for 7.30 kickoff at the Venado Club in Bulleen on Wednesday <laughs> night. And if you're very sensible, you'll get in there at the Venado Club and have a nice uh, sit-down dinner. It's a lovely, palatial, you know, three-storied executive hotel with spa baths and oh, croissants and all sorts of things. It's fantastic. Venado Club Wednesday night, half past seven for that one. Hard Unless to see, it keeps running, of course. Hard to see how the ground's going to be ready on a Wednesday night if, it, if it's Sunday or, or Monday. It yes. Still yes. stuff, so... Anyway, the Thank game will be that, there. Thank you for that, Paul. Thank you for that, Rob Gell. First game, first results from the North, uh, from the North Geelong from the game North. against Albion Red Sox, and the score there was nil-nil, Blakey. Yes, not a lot happening down there. It was a very critical game, of course, fifth against sixth, and plenty riding on it. Uh, the closest anyone came was Richie O'Sullivan. He hit the crossbar in what was described as a fairly dull and uninteresting game, and uh, there was a couple of those at the weekend. Scoreline tells a story, eh? Yep. Okay, Sunshine Georgies won, Box Hill Inter won. And of course, we'll be speaking to the skipper of the Sunshine Georgies a little later. Norman Doherty. Norman Doherty, Storm and Norman. Um, but uh, another impressive display by the improving Box Hill team, and uh, uh, Box Hill going in front through Gary Frazzini in the first half. Sunshine George is waiting until the death knock, 89 minutes in to get the equaliser through Craig Lewis. And a little bit sad, isn't it? A little bit poignant. Let's, you know, Frank Marateo, who was the young goalkeeper in at Box Hill, I believe it was only his second game of the season, he was nearly in tears after the game because he was blaming himself. He was taking oh, the burden yeah. on his broad shoulders for the equalising goal. So that's a bit sad. And Frank, the truth is, uh, it was your fault. You're so kind, Blakey. Well, you can play, kick them all up and no, be positive. And you... it, look, you've got to say, Box Hill, the improving team on the horizon. One team that's not an improving team on the horizon is... They're established already. Port Melbourne Sharks, three, too good for Werribee, nil. Magnificent. And uh, little Georgie Spigos, who we said, you know, we've said a couple of times he had a, an enforced breakthrough injury. He's jagged two goals this weekend in another big win for Port Melbourne. And, uh, of course, the truth is, folks at home, we all know that George Figos only gets a game at Port Melbourne because his coach, his father, rather, is the coach of Port Melbourne, and that is Taki Spingos. Taki, welcome to the Soccer Show on Channel 31. 